Guys, what the shiz is up. As you are listening to this podcast tonight, Monday, June 21st, 7 p.m., we have the Ted Jones Comedy Show at The Stand NYC at 116 East 16th Street in Union Square. It is going to be a blast. We have Hannah Burner, Reg Thomas, Matt Pavich, Zach McGovern, Karen Feehan, Julio Gallerati, and of course, yours truly, Ted Jones. Tonight is going to be a fantastic show. I really recommend you guys come. We have a few tickets left. Tickets are in my Instagram, Instagram bio. bio. Jones World, or go to thestandnyc.com. The show is tonight. I'll see you guys there. Let's get to it. I'm not sure if I just spoke over my IG bio, but Ted Jones World on Instagram tickets are still remaining. So scrolling through the news today, and by scrolling through the news today, I mean checking out TikTok and Instagram this morning. Alex Cooper, the host of the Call Her Daddy podcast, which is on like the Barstool Sports Network, just signed a three-year, $60 million deal with Spotify to exclusively release her podcast. And I'll just, I'm, I'm going to give a, a round of applause here for Alex Cooper. Great job, girl. I don't know you. I slid into your DMs probably two years ago. I'm still waiting for a response, but I'm sure you'll get to it. The name of the game for this podcast in particular, Call Her Daddy, has been Transparency. I think from day one, this was this was a podcast that came out and it was really the only podcast talking about sex on the male front or female front in such detail, like talking about everything going on in their lives. And it, I mean, as soon as it just became Alex's podcast, when she had the split with her host, Sophia, I believe was her name. It's just been all about her life and how transparent she's been to the listeners and viewers. So I think that's the name of the game, guys. Transparency. I've been talking about this for a while on a number of these podcast episodes here. And I'm just trying to give you guys the full scoop. What's going on in my life in general? What's going on with whoever's life we have on the couch here with me in terms of interviewing but uh, it's going to continue to be a journey here. Guys, Ted Jones World Podcast, episode 145. Thank you for tuning in. And if you guys have listened to any episode in the past, I really appreciate it. Subscribe to your boy. Shoot me a like on YouTube. Subscribe to my channel if you guys are watching on YouTube right now. Ted Jones World. But I want to get back to Alex Cooper for a second. She did this thing the full complete correct way about a year ago she signed a contract with barstool sports for a year for five hundred thousand dollars i think had some sort of deal with the call her daddy merch and now that it's been a year she has signed with another company i know that she had said that she was doing the deals in a non-shady way talking to her boss dave portnoy about what she wanted to do and how she wanted to go forward and it's the name of the game, guys. Transparency. So make sure that you're always being honest. Don't try and do anything sneaky. And as you can see, this has clearly worked for this particular girl. So nice work. As you guys can see, if you're watching on YouTube today, I'm wearing glasses. And how have you guys been dealing with just exclusively wearing glasses the past year? I can't imagine that well. I Before the last year, before... Guarantana and having to wear these masks all the time. I loved wearing glasses, but wearing glasses and masks is almost impossible just in terms of like a fogging situation. It really was never comfortable. And now I'm happy I can get back into it. The masks are less apparent now in society as New York and California have gotten to the 70% vaccine rate. So more places are opening up, but the rest of the country's got to get it. In order for Biden to be giving us, what, a beer and free child care if we get the vaccine. So basically, we're all getting wasted and trying to have babies. Just kidding. So I went to a trainer for the first time the other day in like three months. I had bought a package with this particular trainer, Andre, back in December. I bought a 10-pack. And you guys obviously can imagine traders in New York City are expensive. So I figured I was going to see him. Once a week, but the guy was super busy and we hadn't connected for about three months. I got up to 197, 197 pounds, as you guys can see in this picture that I'm putting up here on YouTube. I got up to 197 and I just wasn't comfortable. I had talked to my trainer about 
getting up to a weight that I've never been at before. I had never been up even close to 197. I was always around like the high 180 range. And I was like, eh, I don't know if I really like this weight, whatever. So I was at 178, 179 at the start of my bulk, as you'll call it, in the middle of December or something. And that lasted like two and a half months. I gained probably 15 pounds in two and a half weeks. And I just really, I didn't like it gained 15 pounds and then slowly started to gain like another five pounds. So I ended up gaining 20 pounds in probably a month, something like that. I just didn't like it. I looked bigger and such. My muscles, I think were fuller. But anyway, I went back to Andre for the first time in three months. He sees me, he goes, what happened to your gains, bro? He goes, I'm not mad at you. I'm just disappointed. I haven't felt that bad in a while. That was like, the teacher telling you they're upset that you got a bad grade in the class. Like, oh, I really expected more from you, Ted. But I just wasn't, I wasn't comfortable at that weight. 197 being my highest. Obviously, I was busting out of my clothes. Jeans didn't fit. Shirts fell a little bit tight. I wasn't comfortable there. And I, <laughs> I came back down. Right now, I'm like at 179. And he just wasn't so happy with how I'm looking. The thing is, when you aren't seeing many people with your shirt off on a day-to-day basis, it's hard to gauge when you look good and when you don't. You know, I'm sure you guys have the same issue. You know, you look in the mirror one day, you see the weight on the scale, and you're like, all right, I think this is kind of exactly where I want to be until somebody tells you, oh, you're looking a little thin, or oh, you're looking a little bulky, looking a little juicy. So... After going back to him and not seeing him for three months, he was saying, we got we to gotta have you gain some weight, man. You just look like a regular guy now. And then he asked me if I'd still be hitting the gym. And obviously, yes, I'd still been hitting the gym. It's just I was curbing my appetite towards, you know, excuse me, away from food. I don't want to say I'm anorexic, but this sounds like a guy who's anorexic. No, someone who's just trying to stay thin and lean because I want abs. Abs are lame. Abs are the only reason that guys really try and lose weight. Females out there listening. What's the first thing that you ask a guy when they say they've been working out a bunch? Oh, let me see your abs. And if you're not down at what, seven, eight or 9% body fat, your abs are, (laughs) your abs are really not there. Abs are tough to get. You can't be six to 195 and have abs. And if you do, then you got to be taking performance performance enhancing drugs. Correct me if I'm wrong. Send me an email, a picture of yourself, boys. I want to see a picture of you with your shirt off at 62190. I don't believe you have abs. I don't think it's possible. I was at 62190 and my abs were barely there. I'm now at 181 and you know the ab struggle still continues. I was at like 172 probably last summer and that's when my abs are really really there, but I was also starving. I was not comfortable. And it's at the expense of the rest of my muscles, my shoulders, my arms, my legs, whatever. Getting abs, you really have to get down to that body fat. There's no secret sit-ups that you can do. That's what that's the first place a guy's body fat goes to is the stomach as well. You know, so if you're losing body fat in your stomach, you're losing body fat all over the place. You're having muscle being eaten on your arms. And I may have went a little bit too crazy with the fasting, fasting overload, doing it like, you know, I say, I say on my vlogs and I said it on the podcast, I was doing it like once a month fasting, but I would also do it more than once a month, you know? So I do see a little bit of a difference in terms of my body composition from what I'm at right now, probably 179 to like 185. So I think that's the, that's the place where I got to be like six to 185. But if you're if you're bigger than that, 62190 and you've abs and you're shredded, please send me a picture. I'd love to see you shirtless. You know, not trying to be weird over here, but I just don't think it's possible unless you're taking SARMs, which is like the minor league version of steroids or steroids. Cuz those drugs just freaking cut you up. Have you all veiny and whatnot. You know? So, Andre, I'm sorry to disappoint you, man, but we'll get back to 183, 184, 185, and we'll stick at that weight just so I can get some some juicy muscles going, you know, because it's not worth it. I understand. He's right. It's not worth it for me to be going to the gym at least five days a week, doing all this cardio crap, watching what I eat, and then it looks like I don't even go to the gym. It's not good.
But just being at that 200 mark, I just wasn't comfortable. So I don't think I want to be that heavy again. I don't know, unless I need to be that heavy for some reason. I think 185 is the goal weight. We had comedian Zach McGovern on the last episode, episode 144, talking about the grind of comedy. Zach's been doing anywhere from two to eight shows in a night for how many years? Probably over 10 years. And the funny thing about comedy is even on your busiest night, you're not even working more than an hour a night, right? So you figure Zach's going to eight comedy shows and he's doing seven minutes. It's 56 minutes of stand-up. So the stand-up grind is real. And I feel like as long as you can just get up anywhere, even if it's an open mic and you just run your set, you're going to get more comfortable out there. You know, and I hope you guys are coming to the show tonight, Monday, June 21st, the day that we're releasing this podcast, 7 p.m. There are a few tickets left. The Ted Jones Comedy Show, guys. We have a terrific lineup. Hannah Burner, Reg Thomas, Matt Pavich, Zach McGovern, Karen Feehan, Julio Gallerati, and myself, of course, Ted Jones. It's going to be a terrific show. I really hope to see you guys out there. And we'll be doing a few shows again in the future. I'm trying to figure out the schedule and how many times a week we're going to be doing it, but I'm super excited and we're going to be getting on it, guys. All right. So subscribe to the Ted Jones World podcast so you get notifications. Boom, boom. When we have new guests or when it's just me here on the couch, I would love to hear what you guys have to say. We've had emails in the past. Keep sending them in. Ted Jones World at gmail.com. And if you're feeling extra spicy, slide into the DMs. And hopefully I'll see that before we record solo episodes here. But yes, yeah, slide into the DMs, Ted Jones World on Instagram. But first day of summer today, or actually, I, I guess I should say second day because it actually is the second day of summer. But I thought that June 21st was the first day of summer, like always. But I just looked on Google and it was yesterday being the first summer. So this summer is going to be great, guys. What is it? As Chet Hanks says, white boy summer. We're going to be doing some crazy ass shit. Just kidding. I don't know why it's even called white boy summer. I think that that was a joke. I think it's hot girl summer. But that was that was last summer was hot girl summer. Theaters, comedy clubs, everything going to 100% in New York since the vaccination rate is at 70%. Couldn't be more fired up about it. Going to see a ton of new faces in the crowd, which I love. And if you guys have any funny jokes for me, let me know. Maybe <laughs> maybe I'll use it in the opening set. Just kidding. I'll, I'll give you credit on the joke if it's funny. Do you know what I'm saying? That wasn't even a good one. There you go. That was a good one. I had to give that one to you. And also shout out your boy, Ricky Valencia. That's wild. But the more we move through having these solo podcasts, I think that... We're going to have more and more subjects to talk about, guys. No matter no matter what's going on in the world, you know, hopefully World War III doesn't happen when we're recording the podcast and we have to cover it. Because, look, I'm not a political guy. Just want to talk about funny stuff here. Let's touch on sports really quick. I was super fired up that the Knicks made it to the playoffs, obviously, because we have not had any significant of a playoff run since 1994 when we made the... NBA Finals with Patrick Ewing, but the Brooklyn Nets, hey, I'll settle for Brooklyn. Kevin Durant killing it. Kyrie Irving injured right now, so Kevin Durant really showing that he is one of the best players in the league, if not the best players of the league, but he had a little <laughs> a little side distraction the other day. This porn star, Lana Rhodes, went on her podcast and started talking vaguely about a, a Nets basketball player and how she went on a date with him and he brought a backup. He brought a backup date to her date or texted her and was like, yo, I'm going to be bringing my fuck buddy. I hope that's chill. So I guess she showed up for the date and then it was all three of them on some sort of date. He wanted to bring it back up just in case she didn't show or whatever, didn't put out or whatever that may be, which I'm sure a lot of guys are clapping from the side and being like, good for you, Kev. Just because, well, one, this is this is all alleged. We don't know if this is Kevin Durant, but the Barstool Sports people dug into it and saw that when Lana Rhodes spoke on how he was the only Libra on the team. And or he, she didn't say that he was the only Libra on the team. She said that he was a Libra. And then an investigation was done into the Nets roster. And it turns out that Kevin Durant is the only Libra on the team. 
And she said he keeps to himself. That also sounds like Kevin Durant. So basically, we're pretty sure that it's Kevin Durant, but this is all alleged. He told Lana Rhodes that he was going to be bringing his fuck buddy onto the date with with them. And I know guys all around the all around the world <laughs> are just focused on how Kevin Durant was able to do this and kind of do it slyly, slyly. Like how many times, guys, have we set up a date with a girl and they end up end up either not showing up or at the last minute say that they're not going to be able to make it a few times. I don't think that's our fault the first time. Second time, if it happens, we're not going for a third, boys. And girls, if he doesn't like you after the first date, doesn't mean he's gay. He's not interested. It just means that you guys are not meant to be. And that's all right. Isn't it better to know that right away after the first or second date before you guys spend eight years dating each other, spend 10% of your life with the other person. When is a good time to break up if you've been spending eight years together with each other and you don't know if you're going to get married or not? Excuse me, or you're still not sure. There's no way that you can be with someone for that long and not know if you're going to marry them or not. If you're still unsure after eight years... Time to pull the plug, guys. Time to pull the plug. That's like the last three girlfriends I've had. I, we didn't make it to a year. We, we made it probably like a month and a half, two months before a year, just because in my head, I'm like, all right, what am I going to get this person for our year anniversary? Don't want to write something on a card being like, I love you. You're the best thing that's ever happened in my life. Because that's probably, that's not true, right? After eight years, you've got to be able to gauge like, all right, I'm either marrying this person or I'm not. But at some point, it's just a waste of time, right? Think about all the other things you could have done in that eight years instead of dating this particular person. Did they make your life better? Sure. I'm sure they did. But you, you got to look at it in a way like eight years, over 2,500 days, whatever that matters, likely 10% of your life you've spent with this person who you've gotten to know so well, you know them in and out. And I think at the end of six months, you can kind of know if you're going to marry someone or not, right? Trust your gut. Maybe you need a few more months after the six month period. But like for me, it's like after three months, I feel like I really know someone and I can know if we're going to go the distance or at least after that six month hump, okay, the next hump is one year. And then after one year, what's the next hump? Three years after three years, it's five years. But I'd say you, you'll know pretty quick if you're meant to be with this person. This goes to the last girl who I was potentially about to start seeing a couple of months ago. I talked about this on one of the previous episodes with Peter Moran. I believe the episode is called She's Just Not Into You or something like that. I had been texting this girl for probably like six weeks. We were trying to connect, see each other. One of us was always busy, whatever. But I think it was genuine. Like I was busy this point. She was busy this point. So finally... It was one of my best friend's birthday, one of my best, excuse me, one of my best friend's birthdays, if that's a correct English form to say it. And I told her I was going to the party. She's like, I'm not invited as a joke. So I told her to come. She brought her friend, whatever. It went well. She was at the bar with her friend for like 30 minutes. We were talking and she ended up not feeling well. But before she left, she said to me, she was like, I'm really not feeling well. Do you want to get lunch tomorrow? And I was like, yeah, sure. I'd love that. That'd be great. Let's get lunch tomorrow. I wake up, I FaceTime her at like 1045 and she doesn't answer and she doesn't text me back within like the next 45 minutes. I decide not to text her. So at this point, it's like 1130 and it looks like the lunch plans are kind of dead. So I could have followed up that FaceTime, I think with like, hey, are we still on for lunch? But I think that the effort needed to come from her after that point, you know, her asking me out to lunch, me saying yes. And then me FaceTiming her in the morning and being like, okay, when I I was planning on being like, all right, like what's the move for lunch? Where should we go? But I didn't hear from her. And that's the last time I heard from her, probably like two months ago. She's still watching my stories and such. Maybe listening right now. If you're listening, yeah, what's up? Yeah, I'm talking about you. Seemed like a great girl, but I mean, isn't it better that we cut it off right then? There was no more chasing, no more wondering, oh, maybe I can see this girl tonight or a night in particular. It just seems like it's wasting time. 
I'm happy that I'm able to be here on the couch alone talking to you guys. If you're watching on YouTube, listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, but less time I think has got to be wasted. And when one door closes, guys, as much of a freaking annoying thing this is to say, another one opens for sure. And I've noticed that, you know, when I have a bummer kind of happen in my life, my personal life has, if, as long as I'm keeping my eyes open, my personal life has improved. Oh, this girl's not going on the, or, or oh, this girl canceled on a date tonight. Okay, let's work on this in terms of myself. You don't have to be at your job for 10 years and just wait for 5 p.m. or whatever time you get out, wait for 5 p.m. every single day so you can go home, watch Netflix, and chill. You know, as long as you're working on something that you're passionate about for, it doesn't even have to be an hour, 30 to 45 minutes every single day after work, and then do it for an hour on the weekend. Eventually, whatever you're working on, it'll start to get really freaking good. Stop wasting time. It doesn't even matter how old you are. You know, look at me, guys. I'm 29 and a half, very open about how old I am. And I didn't start this podcast till I was like 27. The first episode, if you guys listen back, I talked about this last episode. I had a broken jaw, six weeks out of jaw surgery. Had like a depleting gum line. So I had to get my jaw broken in three places. I couldn't eat solid foods for two months at least. Started a podcast at six weeks out of surgery, sitting on the brown couch over there by myself, just talking about God knows what. But you got to stop wasting, got to stop wasting time. Be transparent. Don't waste time. It's too much. The waiting eight hours to text me back, it's too much. Guys, you can agree with me, girls. I don't know if, if he's doing that to you. That's a sure sign he's not into you. Eight hours? I was busy. Fuck that shit. No, you're not. No, you're not. It works both ways. You're not busy for eight hours. Are you doing something for eight hours? Yeah, sure. But if you really have an interest or a care in the other person, you're not going to make them wait eight hours for a text or text them back a day later. It's just nonsense. We got to stop playing games. And I think the games have been played more and more as social media has become bigger and bigger, you know? It's like, oh, look how much fun I'm having on this app. I don't have time to text you back. I'm in Cabo with the girls. Look how much fun I'm having on my Instagram story, on my TikTok, meaning I don't have time to text you back. Like my grandparents were married for 68 years. Is that going to happen in the future here? I see some of my friends getting married from college, having them kids and stuff. Are they going to be together for the next 68 years? From the age of however old they were when they got married, whatever, 25 to 92. Is that the correct math? Yeah, 25 to 92. Holy shit, with all these distractions? I don't know. A wife catches a husband looking at a porn site. She gets super jealous and offended. She whips out the divorce papers right there. There's so many more distractions, so many things that people think can be an excuse for not giving their full attention to somebody else. You got to be transparent out here, guys. And look at Alex Cooper. Start at the beginning of the episode here. Look at Alex Cooper. Just inked a three-year, $60 million deal from what? Talking about BJs, being transparent. Talking about guys being deadbeats, whatever it is. It's a different world. Change of pace. My main goal here is just to put it all on the table. I want you guys to know everything about me. Send me an email, tedjonesworld at gmail.com. What do you want to know? I want to be cut. Whatever that whatever means. That means. Getting but getting cut, cut and not, not taking, taking performance-enhancing drugs, drugs, I think, I think like is a, like a, it's a double-edged sword. sword. You can't be, can't be super, super cut, cut and have your muscles, your muscles protruding out unless you're fucking starving, starving. unless you're unless super hungry. hungry. You know what I mean? You know what correct me, if I'm, wrong, wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm training incorrectly. My diet's off. I'm also a vegan. vegan. What, I'm not getting enough protein. BS. I hit the chickpeas, hit the black beans. You guys, take a look at those stats if you don't think that there's a lot of protein in there. You know what I mean? The fruit, fruit level is at an all-time high. high. Not me. I'm like, you know, not being fruity. fruity. I mean, like eating, eating fruit, fruit, eating wedge towel. towel, trying to trying keep, trying that, keep that, that diet tight. tight but it, it's, it's it's tough, tough out there. there. So you got so to be true, true to yourself, true to other, to other people around you, and let, let people, people know, know what you want. want. I'm done with these texting games. Done with the double texting. No more triple texting. Double texting with the dates. If somebody wants to see you, they want to see you. 
I think we've lost we've lost touch of that. Before texting, before the internet, people would write freaking letters letters to each other, guys. Responses would take three days, but you'd have to write a heartfelt letter to someone and you generally say what you mean in those letters. You know, that's why divorce rates are up so much now. There's just so much of a distraction all over the place, whether that's like Instagram models on your cell phone that you're checking out, watching porn on the internet, whatever that may be. Life is a lot more distracting these days, guys. Before we sign off here, guys, I want to remind you again, Ted Jones Comedy Show tonight, Monday, 7 p.m. at the stand, 116 East 16th Street. We have six amazing comics, Hannah Burner, Reg Thomas, Matt Pavich, Zach McGovern, Karen Feehan, Julio Gallarotti, and myself. Ted Jones. It's going to be amazing. A few tickets left. Instagram bio, Ted Jones World, or go to thestandnyc.com. It's going to be a phenomenal show. I really can't wait. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Episode 145. I'll see you next time for 146. Peace.